everybody. This is Charles Barnett, and uh, I have, I would say, a fresh revelation from the Lord for us today. Um, I don't even think I'm going to be able to, this is good, this will preach, and this is going to take a while, so I'm probably going to do a short version of it right now. And then maybe later on in this week or toward the weekend, I will work it a lot more. It's probably going to take longer because there's a lot here. And uh, there's a story in the Old Testament, the book of Joshua. And Joshua is battling pagan nations. And... They were told by God of the spoils of war. There were some things that they were not supposed to touch. They were not supposed to take. They were not supposed to embrace. Because they were cursed things. They were, they were uh, things from pagans. Things from the world uh, of sinful mankind outside of the realm of the righteousness of God. So that's what they would call paganism or heathens. And so some of those things was uh, like their currency, their gold, their silver, um, their uh, significations of their lifestyle and their beliefs, um, their garments, that what they wore. And so one of the battles... Uh, one of the men of Israel, named Achan, he uh, he sees some things and he takes them when he wasn't supposed to. He sees some silver and he sees some gold, and he takes that silver and he takes that gold, and then he sees a Babylonian garment, really nice garment, you know, so. He sees these things and he grabs them because he wants them for himself and he hides them in his tent. Well, nobody knows about it except for Achan and, and God. And uh, so now there's sin in the camp of Israel. Now they have embraced the accursed things. It's cursed. So it brings a curse upon the people of God. So the next battle they go to fight, God doesn't help them, and they start to lose lots of people's lives. They're losing the battle. So Joshua goes before God. He's crying out, why are you allowing this to happen? We're losing. And Joshua said, and God says to Joshua, get up, stand up. He says, there's sin in the camp of Israel. He says, they have stolen and deceived. And so, I got a revelation from the Lord. Now, I know the Lord has told me in the past that there are some things that are like the greatest curse to the church, to the body of believers. And uh, I've touched on it before. Um, I know it uh, ruffles feathers, steps on people's toes. I'm not going to get into that, but there are some things that uh, we have embraced, we have adopted, we have taken or stolen from the heathen, pagan world, the secular world, and it's brought a curse upon us. But I don't want to get into all that. I'll work that later. But this is what has happened. And so the Lord said that, you know, you have thieves and deceivers in your camp. Now, I started to think about that. And, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't ever remember anybody talking about Achan as a thief and a deceiver. Everybody always teaches it and preaches it like as if this was the first time he ever took anything. You know, he saw it, he was enticed and took it. Um, but the way God is talking about Achan 
is as is that this is something he has done before. And when you start to look at it, when someone does something for the first time, they go to steal and try to deceive. They're not really good at it. You know, they're not really good at it. Um, you know, you have to do something quite a few times and and uh, uh, practice it a lot to really master it and be good at it. So what the Lord revealed to me was that this was not the first thing that Achan stole. And this was not the first thing that Achan was deceiving his brethren, fellow Israelites about. Is that this is something that he had done often. It's just he was he had not been caught before. Because you know, thou shalt not steal. You know, if you got caught stealing, you're in big trouble. You know. But Achan, because he did these things and he saw the spoils of war, he saw these shekels of silver and this big wedge of gold and this Babylonish garment, which is like the garments that are really expensive, made out of excellent, something like the celebrities would probably wear, things that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. It was like that. So he, to him, he was like, hey, I can do this thing. I can keep these for myself and hide them and deceive everybody and get away with it. But he couldn't because his sin caused the people of Israel to lose a battle. So Joshua starts going through the camp, finally comes to his family, and he ends up confessing because he can't give glory to God and God will not bless him because he stole from the world. He stole uh, pagan things and pagan ways, pagan lifestyles, and it corrupted his heart. And so therefore, swift punishment came unto him. It was very, very bad. But what the Lord was showing me is that Achan was already a thief. He was already stealing. Achan was already a deceiver. He was already deceiving. You know, I looked up his name. And um, it's, it's the origins. It's an unclear origin. In other words, people don't know exactly where that name came from. But somehow, somewhere, his name, I don't know if it was before this event or after this event but Achan means troubler someone who brings trouble and that's what the Lord is he showed me is that when the people of God decide to embrace secular things secular means uh, ways of living apart from God outside of God that may not uh uh, agree with the Word of God, um, things that are the ways of mankind apart from God. Like you won't find these concepts in the Bible. You know, the, uh, sometimes these concepts are very secular and even maybe um, demonic. But when the people of God embrace such things, uh, when they embrace heathenism or uh, pagan ways, <laughs> <laughs> they are embracing a curse. And many people who do this are actually deceived by these ways, by paganism. They're deceived by paganism. They're deceived by the secular. And unfortunately, these things will rob them of their blessing. And what happens is since these people embrace such things, they become thieves and deceivers. And now they're caught in a vicious trap of being cursed because they embrace the accursed things. And therefore, God cannot bless them. God will not bless them. And then they will lose battles. And in our day and age, they're gonna lose the spiritual battles. 
they will not be victorious in spiritual warfare. Why? Because they forsook God and embraced the world. They embraced paganism. They embraced those things. They embraced uh, their riches. They embraced trusting in riches and, and, and the power and strength of, of the economy and the power and strength of, of rich and, and influential people and not God. That's why the Bible teaches that for the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money. That means the root of all evil starts in mankind and what we decide to idolize, what we decide to embrace, and what we decide to make our God. Or we try to become God. And we try to become powerful and not submit ourselves to God. So then we become a troubler to the people of God, to the believers, the collection of believers, which is the church called out people. Unfortunately, and I'm gonna close this off, but the body of Christ has embraced a lot of secular ways, a lot of paganism, and have adopted the lifestyles and not even realized that they have brought a curse upon themselves. And then they wonder why they're losing the spiritual battle. They can't win any spiritual wars. And it seems like they can't, aren't blessed by God. I ain't got no blessing. I ain't got no favor. Maybe it's because you have disobeyed the Lord and brought a curse upon yourself. Because there is the law and concepts of blessings and cursings. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And, uh, but yeah, Achan. Achan was a thief and a deceiver. He was a troubler. And it caught up to him. And so, we really need to take self-inventory. <clears throat> I've heard for over 25 years we need to be a Book of Acts church. But instead of being like the Book of Acts church, we become more like the world. We become more like the pagan religions. We become more like secularism. We embrace their ways and their lifestyles to our own hurt. And all of a sudden now, instead of having the spirit of Christ, and, and instead of embracing the lifestyles of the early church, we get the spirit of Achan and bring trouble. We bring trouble to the body of Christ because we have embraced pagan Babylonish ways. We have put idols of gold and silver and things that this world has to offer above the provision of Christ. We need to take self-inventory. We do. We need to take self-inventory because we got to get the curses out. We got, we're so filled up with so many secular paganistic activities, things that got their roots in paganism. We're so busy, uh, caught up in that, we don't even know it. And the apostolic early church way is prayer meetings, fellowships and prayer meetings, testifying, spreading the gospel. We, we hardly have any of that because we're so full of accursed things. So the Lord showed me this. I really firmly believe he's going to start to clean house. He already started, but I think he's really going to uh, clean house where those who have embraced the cursed things, he's removing blessings and favor, and he's allowing the devil to kick us in the teeth for embracing Babylonish heathen paganism. And everybody's going to know it. And everybody's going to see it. And they're going to see who's the, 
who has the spirit of Achan and they're going to be exposed and it's not going to be pretty so it'd be best for us right now to take self inventory if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways he says then I will hear from heaven then I will forgive then I will heal <coughs> so it's something we've got to do we got to do now because we have embraced so many things that are not in the Bible that are not from God that weren't practiced by the early church that weren't practiced by the first apostles and prophets of the church and we're doing so many things that come from from neo-christianity or christian christianity that don't even have the full truth or even other religions that have nothing to do with christianity but we're embracing a lot of their concepts and their ways it's sad it's cursed and we really need to repent so i think i'm gonna work this over a lot more later on but this is charles barnett from apostolic gatherings network in jesus name